Let's take a look at some common operations we can do using Perforce when we're working on an Unreal Engine 4 project. In my case, I already have a project set up on a server. The server happens to be running on my internal university network, and I have all of the usernames and permissions set up properly. So all I need to do is get a copy of that project onto this local machine and then make some changes to it. First thing I'm going to need is a workspace. So I can make a new workspace. The convention here is to have your username and then some string that identifies the machine you're working on. In my case, I'm using my office number, which is RB479, and then a, a name that represents the project. This I'll just call video demo. The default location is OK, although I tend to prefer to put these things right in my Unreal Projects folder here under Documents. So I'll make a new empty folder here called Video Demo. And that will be where the files are copied into. I have, happen to be using a stream-based depot, although the same thing applies if you're not using a stream-based depot, where uh, I can select where I want to connect to. So which, which depot and which part of which depot. In my case, mine is called Video Demo Depot. So that should be all I need. Uh, if I were to select automatically get all revisions, then Perforce would go ahead and, and do exactly that. Um, but I'm, I'm going to show that step by step here. So I can say OK and OK. And this now will bring up the regular P4V interface. So we can see that I have this workspace selected. Uh, the folder is currently empty. If I say Git Latest, then Perforce goes out and grabs the project. Here it is. Let's open it up with Unreal Engine. OK, so this is a very, very simple project, where all I've done is stick a little welcome message widget onto the uh, default empty blueprint project. The first thing that you're going to want to do is make Unreal Engine aware of the fact you're using Perforce. So up here under Source Control, we can see right now there's that No sign. We're going to connect to Source Control, choose Perforce. And uh, if you're lucky, it'll recognize there's a workspace right here that we want to connect to. Uh, remember that if you need to key that in, you can always find your workspace name over here in P4V. Um, and there's also options down below where you might need to enter your, your password in order to be able to find which workspaces exist. Um, but in the best of cases, it works just like I showed here. I can say accept settings, and now we can see, yes, the connection is successful. So let's say we wanted to go into this project and replace that welcome text with something else. So here's my widget blueprint. Oh, showed up on the wrong window. Here we are. Uh, and we want to change this text, let's say, to something more conventional, such as Hello World. Now, once I've entered that, Unreal Engine notices that I've made a change to one asset file, and we get this message that says, One files need checkout. Perforce uses a checkout model so that only one person can be editing an asset at a time. That's really valuable when you're dealing with large binary assets like Unreal Engine does. So now I missed my opportunity to click on that pop-up, but that's okay. If I say save up here, I get a, a clear indication that what I need to do is check this out in order to make changes to it. So I'll, make, uh, I'll check it out. I can compile and run. Everything looks fine. Let's take a look at, at what somebody might see if they try to make a concurrent change. So I happen to have the same project open in another window. This is actually attached to a different workspace. And uh, right, we can see if I run this, we see the original welcome message because none of those changes are on the server yet. Take a look at WP, WBP welcome here. We can see there's a message that says it's checked out and the name of the user and the name of the workspace that has it checked out. That's really valuable. If I went in here and tried to make some changes, let's say again we just go in and change this message. Right, we get a we get a warning, right? This this is not going to work because somebody else already has this checked out. Because we can't merge binary assets, this is really the best workflow to have is make sure that only well, one workspace has the assets checked out at a time. Okay, let's get rid of this one for now. Well, I'll just have to say ask me later so I can move this window. So once we have our coherent body of work done, we need to submit our changes to version control. And we can do that through P4V. We can also do that over here in Unreal Engine. So I'll go back to this view. I can say source control and submit to source control. This tells me which assets have changed, which things am I, am I making modifications to. And I also have to put in a change list description. 
check with whoever is running your project to see what kind of local norms are needed for change list descriptions, but I normally treat them a bit like uh, I might in a system like Git or Mercurial, where I start with a line that describes very broadly what I'm doing, and then I can include some extra text. So, for example, I might say, uh, change the message on the widget. Uh, now, it's probably not obvious here that you can put multiple lines, but having multiple lines is really important because if I had some more to say here, like this is a demonstration of how to make a change in Perforce and submit to a depot, the fact that I can put in multiple lines there is really important, right? There's really no limit. Make sure you're clear here, because this is the this is your paper trail, right? This is what you leave behind for other developers, and maybe more importantly, for future you to remember what you did. There's an option here to keep these files checked out, although generally when I'm working, I'm submitting because I'm done with these files. I'm done having them checked out, and somebody else needs to be able to get them. So we can say OK here. Let's take a look at this from the perspective of the other workspace. Now, I've made a change into this file, but I can't save this change, so that puts me in kind of a sticky situation. So to keep life simple for me, I'm just going to close this instance and say, don't save that change. So now, looking at P4V, I can choose whichever workspace I want. Video demo again is the one I started in, but this is the other view of it, right? the one for the instance of Unreal Engine that I just closed. What I can do from here is say, I want to get the latest version. So I select the root and say get latest, WBP, welcome, there it is, welcome you asset, that it's number two of two. And if we want to see more details, we can look at the history. Um, that might not be in your default view, but we can say view and history to bring that up. Notice here that we can see the file changed, we can see who changed it, we can see when it changed, and we can see what the change log is. So that's the fundamental use of Perforce with Unreal Engine. You create a workspace, you get a copy of your project into the workspace, check out files while you work on them. Once they're ready, you submit them, and every other person who's working, every other workspace you have, then can get the latest in order to see what those changes were.